I've been in this business almost 27 years. The rule and regulation they got and the fine they got is, is not worth it. This is Nasser Faranakian. But for short, I just used Farah. Nasser runs a gas station in Corpus Christi. In 2016, the state of Texas cited him for not keeping proper business records. This is how much he had to pay. This is the Sitco Petroleum Corporation. Sitco for short. Sitco runs two refineries in Corpus Christi, just across the highway from Nasser's gas station. Over the past five years, these plants exceeded legal pollution limits 66 times. Here's how much Sitco had to pay. Nasser and Sitco's fines are similar, but their businesses are not. And Nasser's situation isn't unique. This is the story of how the Texas Commission on Environmental Quality aggressively fines individual gas station owners while letting major oil corporations off with slaps on the wrist. Nasser's an Iranian-American who moved to Texas in the 70s to study. He always dreamed of starting his own business. He saved up to buy a convenience store in 1988. Then he bought this gas station in 2005. Fast forward 10 years, Nasser's gas station floods during a series of rainstorms. A seal on his storage tank fails. Rainwater mixes with gas, and the diluted gas can't be sold. So Nasser calls a local company to pump out his storage tanks and continues business as usual. One year later, a TCEQ official shows up. He inspects Nasser's paperwork and points out that some fuel didn't make it to the pumps. Nasser tries to explain his gas tanks didn't leak. He showed TCEQ proof that his storage tanks had been pumped. They just fined me anyway. He was fined almost $60,000, in part because he didn't report the lost inventory. Eventually, Nasser hired a lawyer. He reached a settlement with TCEQ and agreed to pay $27,000. What we, what we can do, we have to take it. But he was also on the hook for $15,000 in legal fees. Hundreds of gas station owners, many of whom are immigrants like Nasser, are fined every year, mostly for missing or incorrect paperwork. Of the 4,200 cases against gas stations, 85% effectively involved poor record keeping. And in these cases, TCEQ can't actually allege or prove that the gas tanks have leaked. Down the road from Nasser, Sitco's two Corpus Christi refineries emit more than 3,800 tons of hazardous pollutants a year. Stuff like carbon dioxide, carcinogenic organic compounds, nitrogen, and sulfur oxides. The kinds of pollutants that make for hazy, bad air quality and trigger respiratory illnesses. In 2012, the Sitco West plant released more than 25,000 pounds of pollutants over a 25-hour period. The company failed to report the emissions within a day as required, and TCEQ fined Sitco $50,500. Sitco appealed the fine, claiming the emission was authorized. In the end, TCEQ reduced the fine by nearly 75%. Here on January 10th, 1901, black gold gushed from the reserves of Texas, the beginning of a tremendous oil empire. Texas's history is tied to oil, and many would argue so are its politics. According to a report from Texans for Public Justice, from 2013 to 2016, the energy and natural resource industry contributed more than $17 million to current lawmakers. The only sector that donated more were lawyers and lobbyists, many of whom work for oil producers. Most powerful in the state are treated more kindly by our state regulators. Those are some of the same companies who are making campaign contributions to um, you know, the state leadership. Luke Metzger is the director of Environment Texas, a nonprofit that advocates for clean air and water. The problem starts right with the permit, um, where TCEQ um, allows these companies to put out Um, far more pollution than uh, is warranted or is protective of human health. But then when they go above and beyond even those overly generous pollution limits, um, they rarely face uh, fines. It took environmental groups seven years in court to get Exxon fined $20 million. The groups claimed that Exxon refineries near Houston exceeded pollutant limits by more than 8 million pounds between 2005 and 2013. But Exxon's penalty is an exception. Oil companies often use what's known as affirmative defense. It's a checklist of criteria that protects them from being fined. If, for example, their emissions are unavoidable or didn't significantly worsen air quality. 
what we learned in the Exxon trial is that um, Exxon, at least, um, routinely just checks all those boxes without actually investigating whether they uh, actually met those standards, and TCEQ, for the most part, takes them at their word on that. When contacted, TCEQ did not respond directly to Metzger's charges. Exxon says it uses affirmative defense, quote, in accordance with all laws and regulations. At the other end of the oil business, retail gasoline and convenience stores are plagued by slim margins, high overhead, and constant turnover. Many of them are owned and operated by Asian and Middle Eastern immigrants, according to an industry policy expert. I'm not too much too educated, not speaking too much good English, but I'm learning and I'm a hard worker. Joginder Singh, an Indian immigrant and gas station owner, only started to learn English when he came to the U.S. in 1998. And he says the language barrier made it hard for him to defend himself when TCEQ fined him almost $6,000 in 2016. An inspector told Singh he'd failed to perform a test to ensure there were no leaks between his supply tanks and his gas pumps. Singh ran the test, and it came back clean. He was still fined. If I'm not providing, they can hang me up upside down, no problem. But I provide to them. I shock that one. Singh says he was never informed that Texas law grants him the right to a translator at no cost. Gas station owners are expected to maintain more than 40 sets of records at any given time. And depending on the record, they have to be updated daily, monthly, quarterly, or yearly. With these gas station owners, they're, they're already facing so many different challenges in running their gas station. And TCQ seems to be uh, placing an additional hurdle in their way to achieving the American dream. The Texas Observer has been investigating TCEQ's enforcement activity. Between 2009 and 2017, it found that fines against underground storage tank owners made up about 40 percent of the agency's caseload. When the Observer contacted TCEQ about the findings, they argued that the fines weren't just paperwork violations, but they were actually indicative of how the gas station is run, and that in some cases, records are the only way to determine if there is a leak or a spill. There's a reason why the EPA as well as TCEQ requires gas station owners to maintain certain records, but TCEQ does have discretion in how much they fine a gas station owner for having incorrect paperwork or missing paperwork. Investigations found that only about 3% of uh, emissions cases against these larger corporations end in fines. That gives you a sense of who TCQ is going after and for how much. Nasser and Joginder are quick to say they're okay paying for these violations. They've done well for themselves and they want to play by the rules. But the amount they're fined, especially in comparison to large refineries, is where they start to see some unfairness. I, I thinking only fine maybe five or six hundred dollar fine. So if I want to open another business, I'm not going to be gas station no more. Fine is very unfair for the small business. It shouldn't be that way. It shouldn't be that way at all.